The Soybean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Pride Seeds, Aragon LQ Pre-Harvest Weed Control, and Cruiser Max Vibrance Beans. Werner Tobin here on the Soybean School. Today I'm catching up with Pride Seeds agronomist Matt Chappell. We're checking out a soybean disease screening trial near Rodney, Ontario. We're looking at sudden death syndrome, which is often brought on by the presence of soybean cyst nematodes. Now traditionally, we've used one source of genetic resistance to fight SCN, but Matt, there really are more tools in the toolbox. You got it right, Burn. So traditionally, like you said, we've really looked at genetics that carry the PI88788 gene for resistance to soybean cyst nematode. Right here in front of me, we're looking at a variety that carries the PKIN gene. The PKIN gene really uh, suppresses those nematodes early season, you know, and has some nice correlation that shows great tolerance to SDS versus those that are susceptible, you know, to really high pest pressure. Yeah. Hey, why haven't we seen more peaking varieties around. I mean, the genetics has been known, but it's been a challenge for breeders? That's right. Breeders have, you know, struggled with, you know, that conversion process, uh, really breeding into top genetics with top yield potential. And historically, we've seen a little bit of a yield drag with Pekin genetics. Uh, we're getting better. I must say that we've really got some elite genetics coming with that protection. I'm really happy to see, you know, things pop out in the screening trials like this and, and really the proof is in the pudding, I think, when we look at what this Pekin uh, gene can do for, for soybean varieties. So Matt, when you're talking to growers, what advice do you give them, you know, where and when to plant Pekin varieties? Well, there's several different ways you can look at that burn, really ways to identify the need for it on your farm. And I think most of all, you really got to test, test your soil, know your egg counts, particularly with nematodes. Uh, farms that have a history of SDS pressure, uh, farms that have maybe hit a plateau in uh, soybean production, we need to really mix up that resistance uh, gene instead of using the same things. It's just really good stewardship, Burn. Yeah. We need to provide those because as we continue to use the same source of resistance year in and year out, we are giving things like soybean cyst nematode the adaptability or the opportunity to really evolve mm. and break down good tools that we have. So we need to throw a different wrench at them. Yeah, you mentioned as well, a key to this is rotation, because we, we do have fungicides going to play a role in managing this disease, but uh, you know, you really have to have a rotation mindset to make the best of this technology. That's right. It's always, you know, we could, we could rotate to a non-host crop. I, I, that would be ideal, but of course we run into situations where economics say we're going to grow beans on beans. Or, you know, maybe we had to destroy that wheat crop and we're coming back around to beans again. So we really have to consider that we do not use the same genetics year in and year out or the same resistance genes such as PI88788. We want to really rotate that up and, you know, continue to suppress our uh, nematode populations and have the best chance to stave off sudden death syndrome late season, which really can can be our biggest economic uh, losses in our soybean production. Hey Matt, great insight sir. Uh, thanks for the opportunity to visit you at the nursery. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks Bern.